So it's 2023 and you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is it. This is the year that I'm going to get a camera and I'm going to learn how to become a videographer, how to make videos. And oftentimes whenever I meet someone who's interested in learning how to do video, the first question they ask is, what camera should I get? So if you've already asked yourself that question this year, this video is gonna help. I'm gonna tell you what cameras I think you should get depending on your budget so that you can best learn video this year. So you're thinking, where do I even start? How much money should I expect to spend on a camera? What camera do I even get? Well, I'm gonna break it up into three categories. Zero to $500, 500 to $1,000, and then over a thousand dollars. And so before I jump into this, it's important to understand that every camera has certain resolutions you can record in, different sensor sizes, different lens mounts, different, you know, waveforms, features built into it. And with these different cameras, there are trade-offs. An underlying feature that I think is critical and fundamental to learning video is having a camera that has the option for changing out its lenses. So with that said, all of these cameras are going to have different lens options, and that's gonna be a big determining factor to the type of image that you get when shooting video. So in the zero to $500 range, my top recommendation would be one of the Canon Rebel series cameras. But these are a good affordable option for getting a camera where you can buy different lenses and still shoot video on them. Other zero to $500 recommendations would be a Lumix GH4 or a used Sony Alpha camera like an A7 Mark I or an A7 Mark II. And the thing is, is you're probably gonna be paying for a used camera in this price range, which isn't a bad way to start off. Next up in the price range of 500 to $1,000, my top suggestion would be a Lumix GH5. I shot on this camera all throughout high school and I loved it. You can probably find a used one on eBay for well under $1,000 and then find a decent lens on top of that. Other suggestions in this price range would be a Canon R10, something new in the R series, um, like a Sony A7S Mark II, something a little more video centric, um, but still more of an older, more affordable option, or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And this would be a good time to pause to talk about something important called the law of diminishing returns. When it comes to buying a camera, there's a relationship between the amount of features that you get with that camera and the amount of money that you pay for it. It's hard not to fall into the mindset of the more money you pay for the camera, the more features you're going to get from it. While that's very true for the first few thousand dollars you're gonna be spending on a camera, the more money you spend, the more features you get grow smaller and smaller. A $70,000 cinema camera has a lot of the same features that a $4,000 prosumer camera will have. However, a $200 point and shoot camera won't have quite as many features as a $2,000 camera. Personally, if you're looking to get into video and you have hardly any money to start, then I would get a camera in the zero to $500 range. But if you have a budget of $500 to $1,000, I would actually hold off from buying a camera in that price range. You're better off saving another 500 or $1,000 to buy an even better camera that's going to last you much longer. And that brings me to the last bracket of suggestions, cameras over $1,000. Now, when you're just starting out, this may sound like an arm and a leg, and it kind of is. But if you're at the point where you do need 4K and you do need log footage and you do need 422 10-bit footage, I would forego buying a camera in this middle bracket of 500 to $1,000. And I would buy one of the following cameras. First off is the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. This camera was just announced a few weeks ago and has some of the best video features found in a camera that's sub $2,000. The next suggestion would be the Sony FX30. This is also an incredibly capable camera for those wanting to take the next step. 
And finally, if you are a diehard Canon person, I would recommend something like the Canon R6 Mark II. Personally, ever since I graduated from my Rebel camera, I've stuck to Lumix and Sony. I just really like their camera ecosystems better. So those are my suggestions for cameras that you should consider purchasing in 2023 if you want to learn video.